This is The Chris Abraham Show. Today's episode is about my personal experience of 9-11. I believe that this is season four, episode five of The Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. And I just want to kind of give you a trigger warning that I'm just going to share my experience of the day. I don't go into any details about anything weird or about what I saw on the television or anything else like that. Just I recounted my day and my memories of that day and um, just casual chat. But, you know, for people who um, still feel very uh, traumatized by that event, I just want to let you know that... uh, I spent 23 minutes talking about it. I'll see you after the break. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 6 of The Chris Abraham Show. Today is September 11th, 2022, and I am not going to use any scripted basis for this. But I was, in, I was on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., Actually, I was on. Uh, I was uh, in Dupont Circle on 9/11 uh, before the planes went into the towers, and I was staying at my ex-girlfriend's house. She moved out. We remained friends. She bought a condo, and she lived there. And for whatever reason, we kept on sharing a dog and sharing a leased. Uh, Grand Cherokee Laredo and uh, Jeep and I was over there and I slept over because she was sick and in the morning I went to the grocery store and bought her as I always do way too much get well soon stuff you know tea and water and orange juice and and snacks and, and healthy food and um, she loved things like rice stream and soy milk. And so then I jumped in the truck and headed to the hill. At that time, um, I had a, a housemate, a roommate uh, named Kate. And I had a friend from Germany visiting, uh, actually a friend of uh, my buddy Mark's, was visiting and staying over as well. Oh, that's the reason why I was staying at Michelle's uh, apartment, because we had a house guest, and she was sleeping in my bed, and Kate was sleeping in her bed, and I was staying at Michelle's, and she was sick. So I jumped in the truck, and for any of you who know uh, Adams Morgan in northwest Washington, uh, you just get over to Adams Morgan Circle, I'm sorry, uh, DuPont Circle Circle, and get onto Massachusetts Avenue, and it's a clear shot all the way across town, all the way to uh, to, to the hill. Uh, there's a Massachusetts Avenue right there, and uh, so I was just heading back, and uh, a little while into it, I had the windows open. I remember it was a pristine, clear blue day, uh, gorgeous outside windows open, playing WAMU NPR, and uh, they announce that uh, an airplane, a jet, a commercial jet, had crashed into the first tower of the, uh, of the World Trade Center, you know, I just knew them as the Twin Towers, uh, I remember them when I was a little kid growing up in New York until I was six, so I always admired them, I always admired their beautiful exoskeleton, those lines. I know to many they were an eyesore, but I thought they were beautiful. If you ever went up close and looked up, you'll realize that um, they are uh, all those things that look like, you know, a ribbed undershirt are actually these amazing, um, I would say, I don't know, mid-century lines. I mean, I know the... uh, I know the Twin Towers were built in 1970, right? No? Hey, Google, when were the Twin Towers built? Construction for One World Trade Center started... Hey, Google, when were the original 
Twin Towers built. 1973, on the website 911memorial.org, they say, the Twin Towers were completed in 1973, though tenants began to arrive in December 1970. The other buildings were built over the next 14 years. I also found an answer to this question. How long did it take to build the original Twin Towers? Do you want to hear it? Sure. On the website history.com, they say, time to build, 14 years. They broke ground in 1966. Two or three stories went up weekly. The towers used 200,000 tons of steel and, according to the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, enough concrete to run a sidewalk between New York City and Washington, D.C. Incredible. Anyway, I won't go into any political things about that day. Uh, I won't even go into any of the background about that day. I'm only going to talk about my experience, uh, 2001, September 11th. So I'm listening to WAMU, and uh, they mentioned that a commercial plane had just uh, hit the Twin Towers. And I look out, and everybody is hearing that at the same moment. Everybody must have been listening to whatever respective radio uh, they were listening to instead of, you know, instead of CDs or whatever. And... uh, and everybody's like freaking out. Everybody's looking at each other. We're caught in a little morning traffic. I mean, it's uh, uh, before. Hey, Google, what time did the first airplane hit the World Trade Center on September 11th? 8.47 p.m. On the website vfw.org, they say it was at 8.46 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on that Tuesday morning when the first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The second plane, United Airlines Flight 175, struck the South Tower of the World Trade Center at 9.03 a.m. So I got back to the apartment on the hill uh, and... um, uh, apparently, my mom had called the apartment, and my mom had had uh, woken the girls up, and uh, they were all watching the uh, POS television that uh, I had. I remember, I think it was 19 inches, 19 inches cathode ray tube. This was before the days of uh, of, of flat screens. So, hey Google, when did flat screen televisions become popular? According to Wikipedia, LCD TVs rose in popularity in the early years of the 21st century, surpassing sales of cathode ray tube televisions worldwide in 2007. Sales of CRT TVs dropped rapidly after that, as did sales of competing technologies such as plasma display panels and rear projection television. Hey Google, when were plasma TVs popular? According to Wikipedia, in 2010, Panasonic shipped 19.1 million plasma TV panels. In 2010, the shipments of plasma TVs reached 18.2 million units globally. People also ask me, when did they stop selling plasma TVs? Want to hear the answer? No, thank you. All right. Anyway, I had a piece of shit Sony... um, uh... 19 inch color TV and everybody was watching it on that maybe we had cable maybe we didn't I think we had cable I remember while I was with Michelle we were a no TV only DVD and uh, VHS television uh, movies and stuff so but I do believe we had CNN maybe I don't remember But we all were like, and when I got there, I thought to myself, on the way, on, I remember in the truck, I remember hearing a big boom, and, um, hey Google, what time did the airplane hit the uh, Pentagon uh, on September 11, 2001? 9.37 a.m. According to Wikipedia, a third flight, American Airlines Flight 77, crashed into the west side of the Pentagon in Arlington County, Virginia, at 9.37 a.m., causing a partial collapse. 
the fourth and final flight, United Airlines Flight 93, flew in the direction of Washington, D.C. Interesting. Um, well, <clears throat> there were rumors, and when I was driving back to the hill, there were rumors that, uh, that the... Um, that the White House was targeted. There were rumors that the White House was hit. There, there were. I didn't. There was nothing about Pentagon yet. I, I um. All I know is when I got there, I believe that maybe the Pentagon or something follow up or something to Washington. I believe that maybe something terrible would happen in Washington. So when I got there. I dropped off, was, I dropped off Susie? Did I drop off Susie? Susie? Susie was our dog. And I turned right around and I headed back after calling Michelle and telling her to pack up and that we were going to move her uh, to uh, Capitol Hill. Which, silly me, you know, the Capitol could have been a target, right? But she lived, um, really, if you think about it, you know, DuPont Circle is sort of right up the street from the State Department and the White House and all of the kind of stuff. So I never thought about it till just right now that uh, we were, you know, pretty close to the Capitol building. Uh, we were just 14 streets away, which, you know, in the long and short of it is, you know, far enough away since we're a very low city. But anyway, I think we just wanted, to, I think everybody who loved each other wanted to be together. Um, we all got together, and we all watched the TV, and we all called friends and all that other sort of thing. And I don't remember much after that. I remember that I was on social message boards and forums, and I believe that I was writing things about it onto my blog, although I can't find anything about it uh, yet. I still need to go through... Um, uh, Wayback Machine and Archive.org, but I just remember that uh, the upstairs neighbors arrived and everybody, we bought pizza from the pizza place around the corner, and at some point during that day, uh, we got all kinds of phone calls and emails from our friends around the world. At that time, I was working for Beehive uh, GmbH um, as Beehive North America doing Zope uh, development, which is a Python-based platform geek stuff. And they called from Berlin, and my friends called from England, and everybody was, uh, the entire world was, was mourning for the attack that had happened um, twice. You know, one on Tower 1, one on Tower 2, and then thrice. Uh, at the Pentagon, and then um, through selfless sacrifice, the uh, the passengers of the fourth aircraft uh, took the plane down, which is the official story. I mean, I'm not going to go into any unofficial stories of this. And at some point during the day, our, our German guest... Uh, left uh, via taxi to another friend's house, I think up in Chevy Chase. And um, that's all I can remember. Uh, I don't have a really great memory, and, and some of it might be reminders from friends or the fact that I wrote a bunch of this down that you can uh, see in the show notes. And uh, all I do is remember that after that, uh, there were lots of Humvees and National Guard and military guys all around the city. Uh, they basically, um, every important intersection had a camouflaged, uh, a woodland camouflaged, uh, and a woodland uh, camouflaged, or maybe they were desert, I don't remember. I just recall kind of like greens and browns. But it, they might have been desert camouflage, you know. Was, uh, but they were all there in their military gear, their uh, M16s, uh, their Humvees uh, at intersections. I believe that 
it was it was really interesting. It was the, it was truly the militarism of Washington D.C. I mean, this was all done uh, to protect us from domestic terrorism, and I'm really glad that it didn't persist to this day. I mean, you go to D.C., it doesn't feel very militaristic at all, unless you were a bike courier with me in you know 1989 and 1990, when you know a kid in lycra like me could just go in and out of um, the Capitol building and the uh, the executive offices and the Senate offices and, and all those other things with just a, uh, a simple, um, you know, the kind of thing that they used to have at courthouses where you just, it's, it's at the airports too, back not that long ago, where you just go through a metal, a metal detector and then run your stuff through an x-ray. Um, I don't even think they had that. I think they did one of those things like when you're going into a concert, you go through a metal, de- or go into a school, you go through a metal detector, and then they ch- they check your bag. Sort of like, um, I don't know, I don't think it's like that in museums in D.C. yet. But that went on for a while. Those uh, uh, Humvees and, and military checkpoints and stuff went on for a while. And as a result of that, I think every time that happens, um, Washington, D.C. takes an opportunity to, um, to armor itself. So I think that in the wake of that, lots of Jersey barriers went up, lots of, um, of pneumatic, uh, you know, uh, barriers kind of, you know, went up and, and giant potted plants that are actually... Uh, um, defense kind of blockades went up and all that other kind of thing. And uh, I I called uh, my friends um, uh, gosh, what were their names? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, the the woman that I traveled around the world with, you'd think I'd remember her name, in 1996 she ended up marrying really well living in the upper west side they both went into she went into um a rating agency you know that rate that rate uh companies and bonds and stuff and he was a banker and he uh actually uh believe it or not i think a month before i was in manhattan visiting them um, Broussard, Broussard is her name, um, Anne Broussard, Anne Broussard and her husband, uh, lived in Brooklyn when I was there, and I stayed in Brooklyn when I was there, and then she and I jumped into the, uh, into the subway and made our way, uh, to, to the, um, subway station that's right underneath under, underneath the Twin Towers uh, where everything was collapsed into and uh, that was her neighborhood her neighborhood, her husband oh, her husband worked at the World Trade Center uh, sorry, work, worked at um, hey Google, what agency runs the World Trade Center? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey Google, what is the agency that uh, protects um, uh, airports and uh, and ports? I don't know, but I found these results on search. It says Customs and Border Protection. I guess customs, I don't know. Anyway, whatever the World Trade Center people were, I think he was that. Anyway, for whatever reason, they were not in the building that day. Um, uh, Maybe they were still on holiday. You know, a lot of people take off August and September. Um, Maybe they were, maybe they had meetings somewhere. I don't know, but they were not there. And they are, to this day, alive and accounted for. So that's awesome. Other than that, I didn't know anybody who was uh, killed or hurt or maimed 
um, either in the uh, in the first responders or uh, here at the Capitol. Sorry, here at the uh, the Pentagon. Which very literally, hey Google, how far is the Pentagon from where I am now? You are one point five miles away from the Pentagon by car. So I'm only one point five miles away. Part of my daily uh, walking trek it takes me by the exact area uh, where uh, the plane entered the uh, the building and in fact right now there is a uh, memorial park uh, that exists right there at the building in fact when I go for a walk I will go check it out I've never really checked it out and I will report on what it what it's all about um, that's my day. That was my September 11th. It was so great to be with people. It was so great that the entire world rallied to our uh, defense, to our support. Um, uh, the entire you you can't understand. Uh, okay, maybe you can understand. The day of September 11th, before we went ahead and stumbled into frickin' attacking the world over it. But for the moment of American vulnerability and suffering, the entire world on September 11th, 2001, the entire world uh, acted in much the same way that people are acting in response to the death of Queen Elizabeth. Um, 50%, 60% of the world are completely um, beside themselves, honoring her loss, um, coming together in support of Rue Britannia and uh, the British legacy and the legacy of, of, of you know, Christianity and, um, and Western values and uh, Western culture and um, all those kinds of things. And the other half, or the other third, or the other 60% or whatever, is like, you know, uh, screw the queen, she was an imperialist pig, she's all that represented, you know, from, from, uh, from, you know, 50 whatever until now, if not before, even during the war, uh, the manifestation of, of British imperialism uh, against people of color around the world, uh, destroying them and stealing from them their, their valuables into the British Museum. But, uh, and, you know, to bring the analogy is, you know, there were obviously people who were quite pleased that America got a black eye. But, on the other hand, um, the rest of the world was apoplectic. The rest of the world... Um, in many ways, uh, sometimes respects, sometimes fears, sometimes admires, but, you know, the West at least, and, um, tends to feel a little bit of kindness towards America and felt a great amount of international support and kindness and not just from the West on that day and the days following it. Um, and that... Uh, was something to behold. I, I dare say there's been nothing like it since. Anyway, thanks for dropping by and listening. I hope that this 23 minutes wasn't too long, and I appreciate your time and attention. Love you lots, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for still being here. My name's Chris Abraham. I'm at chrisabraham.com. You can reach me, uh, chris at abraham.su. Um, I'm at uh, twitter.com slash chrisabraham, instagram.com slash chrisabraham, youtube.com slash chrisabraham, facebook.com Facebook slash chrisabraham. You can find me at noagendasocial.com slash at chris, at chris, sorry, noagendasocial.com slash at Chris um, which is the at sign ampres, amp, amp, at, at the at sign um, 
I I'm plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. That reaches me via telephone, via text, via WhatsApp, via Telegram, via Signal, uh, via con Dios, my darling. Via con Dios, my darling. Vaya con Dios, mi amor. Anyway, I'm not having a stroke. Uh, And I don't know. I'm going to try to do this podcast every day. I'll just sort of riff, raff, and raff, riff, and riff it up. Riff, 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 riff. And if you like it, you'll make me part of your life. And if you don't, then God bless you. You've got better things to do. Uh, Aloha, mahalo. Uh, Chuzi, ciao, Alfida Zain, adios, hasta luego, hasta mañana, uh, a tout à l'heure, a demain, uh, ciao, au revoir, and all those things. Bye bye. Love you. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.